Hello everyone, Anand here, back with another video. In this video, we are going to continue creating our Alexa skill using serverless framework. If you have not watched part 1 and part 2 of this video, I would highly recommend that you watch them before continuing. The links are in the video description below. So let's get started. In the previous video, we set up serverless framework in our local and deployed our first serverless function to AWS Lambda. In this video, we are going to build our skill in Alexa skill builder and then create a backend for it in our local using the serverless framework. Uh, let's start by giving our skill an invocation name. An invocation name is something the user will say to begin interacting with a skill. It's like the name of your skill. Uh, it has to be simple and catchy. I'll simply use crypto market and you can choose this to be whatever you want. Next we come to intents. I will quickly add an intent. I'll name it get price intent. So an intent is an action that needs to be performed based on what the user says. And you can create as many intents as you want. Uh, next is sample utterances. An utterance is a sentence which the user will say to trigger this intent. So uh, let's just add a few intents. What's the latest price of? And again, I don't want to hard code the names of all the 1400 or so cryptocurrencies. That's why I'll use a slot named coin name. It will hold anything the user will speak here. It may be Bitcoin, Ripple, Ethereum, anything. Uh, we'll get back to slots. But before, let's add a few more utterances. Now I need to define the slot I have used. It needs a data type just like variables have in programming languages like C++ and Java. There are a lot of them, but in our case, let's just stick to Amazon.search query. For now, this is all taken care of. Let's get back to our serverless application. I have created a GitHub repository so that you don't have to copy all the boilerplate code. This will serve as a starting point for all your future Alexa skills. A master branch has all the code in it, but let's go to a different branch, uh, v3 start, and we'll together modify this code to reach to the master version. So let's clone this repository. Copy this from uh, under clone or download. Open a command prompt and write git clone and paste the URL. You can optionally specify a name of a folder in which you want to copy it. And uh, now move into the folder by using CD. By listing all the files, I see that I'm on the master branch. And by the way, I'm using git bash. So that's why it's showing here. Uh, but in this video, we are going to use v3 stat branch. So let's check out that branch. I can simply say uh, git checkout v3 hyphen start. So let's pull this up in our favorite editor. I still use sublime text like a caveman. Uh, now open pack package.json. You will see we have some dependencies. Now open package.json. You will see we have some dependencies listed here. So I would quickly do npm install and this will install all the packages listed here. Opening the main.js file, you will notice that there are a lot of things here. There's this Alexa library we are including and then there are a lot of logs. Uh, you can set your skill ID here, but uh, it's not required. Uh, here we are registering the handlers for different intents. Finally, we are here executing the skill. Now let's go through the handlers. In default handler.js, we are handling the intents which are required by Amazon. Uh, I like to keep them in a separate file because uh, they almost never require any modification. You can see the three intents which have the same name as the ones given on skill builder. Now let's go through the main handler.js. You can pretty much say that this is the brains of the application. Uh, here I have defined the get price intent, which is the same as defined here. Uh, here's how you receive a parameter from user. It is there in the event object, which we saw in the previous video. Let's quickly go through the YAML files and see what has changed here. You can see only two things have changed. First is the file name and the other is the name of the function. Previously, if you remember the file name was handler.js, and the function name was hello. Now the function name is handler and the file name is main.js. Now let's quickly deploy this and test from the skill builder. I will type serverless deploy. And uh, uh, there's one more thing to do before we can test our application. So we need to link Lambda and Alexa skill by providing each other's ID. So they basically have to know each other before they can transfer any data between them. So let's open our Lambda console. And now the one already present here is created by serverless and doesn't support authenticated requests. So let's delete this and create a new one. 
click Alexa skill in the left here and it says configuration required come down and uh, you see there's a place to enter the skill ID we can get this skill ID from here by clicking endpoint in the left sidebar so copy the skill ID from here and paste it in the text box here also copy the ARN from top right here and paste it in the skill Alexa skill builder page now let's save and build this model okay so now we are ready to test this model i will enable this toggle and uh, let's try this launch crypto market you can ask me things like what is the latest price for bitcoin or current price of ethereum what can i help you with so that worked pretty well you can see the response object it contains output text and card which contains the response and this is coming from here also see that we are not ending the session here so I can simply ask how is Bitcoin doing without invoking the skill you have asked for the prices of Bitcoin it's usually a good idea to keep the session open so since our output is configured this way that we return the parameter pass so now we know that the inputs are coming through now let's quickly use the coin market caps api to get the price for our favorite coins first we are going to need a popular http request library called request promise this is an extension of the library called request and it allows us to use promises for our http calls and you don't have to worry about it we have already installed it during our npm install i will pull up the documentation for this we are going to need this let's organize our code a little bit i will pull i will put this url in a variable and use it everywhere else or better i should move this into a configuration file i already have now let's now let's copy some more code as i am lazy and let's do some quick formatting never be lazy to format your code let's name this body and simply log the response in console and it will be visible in CloudWatch. Let's catch any error that may happen and log that as well. Now prepare the responses for Alexa skill. I will copy this and move it here and reformat everything. So speak is where you want to put everything Alexa says. And some devices have a screen so everything under card renderer will be displayed on that screen. Now let's deploy this. Uh, launch crypto market and then how is bitcoin doing let's see there was a problem with the requested skills response we have an error uh, intent request get price intent coin name so the intent is fine and the parameter is also fine it must be our function then let's see in the cloud watch if we have anything okay uh, here's the response from coin market cap api uh, cannot read property of card render of undefined so let's see okay I got the problem here when you are using promises you are creating callback functions which have their own version of the this variable to avoid it you can save the outer this variable into another variable and use that inside the callback function or what I learned or what I like to do in these situations is use arrow function notation which are the syntax of future that is ES6 JavaScript and since we are using Node.js we can use these it's much more cleaner and makes your code look more readable now let's deploy that again let's test this one more time and uh, let's check out the logs once so no errors here let's continue with the next step okay now we need to get the prices of whatever coin name is passed in the request so let's get the price from response i will first pass this as json and save it in result variable now let's see we need to compare the name of every coin object to see if it matches with the coin name variable in our code and then return the price so let me do something no this is not the best approach but hey this is not a javascript tutorial there are better ways to do this and we'll talk about them maybe in a different javascript video 
there are better ways to do this and uh, we will talk about them maybe in a different javascript video so uh, i will also add a response in case we are not able to find the coin in api list also response dot listen is used to reprompt the user for a response without invoking the skill again so the session will remain open for around eight seconds before it closes automatically I will reuse this piece of code to check if the coin name is actually provided by the user. Amazon has strict norms for publishing apps. They will manually review each app and give you a detailed feedback. I had to put my previous skill three times into the review before it was accepted. So make sure you are handling the errors very well. Now finally if the coin is found I want to return the price which is price underscore USD from the, um, from the API object. Now it's time to test the app again. Let's do it directly this time. Ask crypto market. Ask crypto market how is Bitcoin doing. So uh, we are getting the same response here. Let's see. Uh, Oh. oh, this should be a variable and not a constant because uh, if you are using it as constant, it won't let you modify. So if you check the logs, there must be an error there. And here it is. Now, uh, one more deployment. Let's test it one more time. The current price of Bitcoin is $9,062.81 per Bitcoin. And there it is the price of bitcoin told to you by alexa i wish it was over fifteen thousand dollars anyways let's check how ethereum is doing the current price of ethereum is six hundred thirty three dollars and sixty seven cents per ethereum okay not bad uh, let's check one more time for ripple the current price of ripple is zero point eight three zero one five eight dollars per ripple cool of course, you can make this a full-fledged portfolio app and ask a user about their investments and then track their portfolio and what not. I have only used one intent and a small function to show how things work. You can add as many as you want and have a really great application within no time since you don't really need to code a front-end here. Let's see how you can publish this skill to the Alexa skill store. Click launch here and you will see a list of items you need to fill. Uh, make it fancy. Whatever you type in here is directly reviewed by Amazon and seen by the customers. So make a good impression and advertise your skill. Once your app is published, you can also check the number of users, sessions, intents, called, utterances and whatnot. So as you can see, creating a skill is not that difficult. It's just a lot of configuration and once you get done with the initial configuration, you can really pick up the speed and create a skill in basically no time. I hope this tutorial series was useful. All the code you see in this video is linked in the description below and feel free to fork and create merge requests if you see any room for improvements. Thank you all for watching and I hope this was helpful to you. If you like this video, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. What skills are you planning to make after watching this series? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video. Happy coding!